What's up, friends? Welcome back to Community TV, a place where nurses and aspiring nurses come to achieve academic career and life success. In this video, I'm going to be talking about my 10 year as a nurse anniversary and some tips and advice I would give to people who um, want to be a nurse. Um, so even if you are a veteran nurse, I would still stay in tune to this video. In fact, if you have some additional tips, leave it down below. Um, but I really, really want to, you know, target the youth in this video because I remember when I was going into nursing, there was a lot of things that I didn't know about at all. Like I was like a deer in headlights and I was told by some people that it would be something and it was a completely... Well, not completely, but it, there was a lot of intricacies around it that I didn't know about. So I wanted to share it with you guys, especially the youth, um, but anybody really who wants to become a nurse um, so that you guys know exactly what you're getting yourself into, okay? So for those of you guys who may think in your head, what, you've been a nurse for 10 years? You look so young. I am young. So if you guys really, really want to know why, how come I'm young and I've been a nurse for a decade, you can actually get a copy of my book, What I Wish I Would Have Known as an LPN. It's on Amazon, it's paperback, Kindle, and I'll leave a link down below for you to get it. And it explains everything about um, how and why I've been a nurse for a decade being so young. And it also gives you advice on how to be, like how to navigate your career as an LPN. But even if you're an RN, I believe there are a lot of gems there that can really, really help you, stuff that you probably won't find on a YouTube video. You probably won't find on TikTok. Like, just something very uh, deep and close to my heart. And also, you know, I've been in this YouTube game, I think, posting videos since 2017. And so, so yeah. So, for those guys who don't know, I was LPN for about six, seven years. And then I became an RN. And this November of 2023, right? Already? <laughs> um, I was, I've been an RN for three years. So, that makes... 10 years total I've been a nurse for a decade so I just wanted to bestow upon y'all some knowledge that you know you won't get from anywhere um, for those guys who have been in my channel already you know I always get keep it real I always uh keep it a buck I always keep it 100% and stuff that I really wish I would have known okay so I'm gonna try to do 10 tips for 10 years but we'll see how it goes okay so my first tip on, on being a nurse, whether you're LPN and, or RN, or even if you are a CNA, a PCT, um, people who work directly in like patient care especially, um, even if you don't work directly in patient care, I think it's uh, very, very important. When I say patient care, I mean like the bedside. The number one tip I would give you is that um, act like you work for the state board of nursing because you do and i think that's the number one tip i think a lot of people go into nursing and they they forget about the liability so act like you work for the state board of nursing what does that mean that means i think even if you're a brand new nurse and you don't have a lot of experience and like you're super duper fresh and you know you have management you know giving you a surplus amount of responsibilities that are sometimes um that sometimes doesn't make any sense your number one goal is to keep the patient safe and nowadays I feel like back when I became LPN 2013 it's either I was ignorant to it or naive or but now I feel like it is even more precedent um, especially post-covid you guys have to know that not to scare you I'm not trying to scare you out of the profession um, in fact I want people to come into the profession because we need more nurses we need more healthcare professionals in general but what I mean by that is a lot of nurses, unfortunately, like if you watch the news, watch Nurse Liz's YouTube channel, watch people who cover that. A lot of nurses, uh, well, I'm not say a lot, but there are some nurses who are starting to become penalized to the point where it goes past uh, losing someone's license, but actually being criminally convicted for stuff. And sometimes, you know, I'll say this, I, I, I don't want this to be a controversial video or whatever, but sometimes certain, I guess, mistakes that nurses make are not necessarily the fault of the nurse, but it's a system-wide issue. And if you're not a nurse or if you're not in healthcare, you wouldn't understand that. And there's like a big debate, and I'm not here to debate anyone, I'm just here to give an advice to people who are in the field 
is that your number one goal should be patient safety. Um, I used to feel scared to, like, for example, if a doctor um, would tell me, hey, like, carry out this order. Like, for example, if a, if a doctor says, hey, can you carry out hydralazine, um, 25 milligrams or whatever, and then the patient has a low blood pressure. This is just such a simple uh example but it's far more complex than that um if you don't agree with the doctor's order do not carry it out and i used to hear that and um i'm I was always thinking in my head well i wouldn't want to upset the doctor or anything but when you see um the heaviness of like the fact that nurses in fact like independent of their doctor like it doesn't matter what the doctor has said it doesn't matter if the doctor put the order incorrectly it doesn't matter if you're a nursing manager or a nursing supervisor told you to do this if you do it <laughs> you know if you are the person who carries out the action like you legitly get in trouble so it's just not like so and I'm not uh, supporting insubordination in any such way uh, because um I truly love when I have a nurse manager, a nurse supervisor who's very supportive and who just works as a team. But you have to also understand is um, just make sure whatever orders that you're being asked to carry out, I guess that would be the second tip, right? Ask whatever orders to carry out. Whatever they're asking you to do, be able to justify the reason behind it in a court room. I'll put it as simple as that. Be able to justify the reason in a courtroom, okay? You essentially, you work for the State Board of Nursing Society. You work for patients. And um, and I know sometimes that can be really difficult because sometimes you do have difficult patients and stuff like that. But you know the saying like, oh, the customer is always right and stuff like that? This could be debatable, but in a sense, it it is kind of true um, I feel like there should be more legislation with um, protecting nurses, especially uh, people who hit nurses. You know, if you're a nurse for several years, you've probably been hit at, spit at, punched, everything, especially if you work psych. Um, like, for example, I've been attacked before, and it's like, I feel like, well, my story was completely different because I'm working in a setting where, you know, it's kind of, I don't want to say expected, but it's kind of, it's kind of what I signed up for. Well, not what I signed up for, but it's kind of like, okay, well, you know, if you work psych, you have to be prepared that anything may happen. Um, and, you know, you can't really blame the patient because it is legitimately not their fault. Like they have a biochemical um, abnormality in their brain um, but that's another story for another day but that's basically my first tip is you work for the state board of nursing protect your license protect your life because like I said um, it's going farther